So when I was a child, I made a promise to myself when I was about seven years old. I used to play in all these magnificent ways by standing across uh, a mirror and pretending I was in all these really amazing worlds. So I could go anywhere in my imagination. And when I went there, it was the most valuable, most incredible, most brilliant space of all where my imagination was truly on fire. And about seven years old, I also know that it was time for me to grow up. So I told myself that maybe it wasn't such a bad thing to still keep playing. Like, can I grow up and still keep playing at the same time? So the promise I made myself is to always look at life and move forward without never, ever stop playing. And I made that promise that I would keep growing up even as a teenager and still keep playing hard with my imagination, with my body, with my mind, with my businesses, with everything that I would do, I would keep playing. But see, I'm kind of a weirdo. And I fly my freak flag really freely. <laughs> so for me to keep playing and asking myself to kind of do it was not a challenge at all. Because like, look, this is how I do my thing. And it is not hard for me to make a promise to myself like that. So I see things through all kinds of lenses. And the challenge I would made myself was to keep playing and to teach all of you how to keep playing. And the most important part about that is it is what I gift. It is what I do. So how can I keep doing it as big as possible? See? Totally weirdo. But when I made that bigger promise that I would be able to bring that to everybody's lives, that they would never stop playing no matter how old and how serious things got, that that would be the bigger promise that everyone kept playing. So I became a playologist. I started by writing books on play and literally doing that through counseling and clinical work, where as a playologist, I was able to bring it one problem and one solution and one family at a time. But to me, that felt like sort of like I had the secret sauce in a backward like office where people were helping and healing, but I wanted to do it bigger. So the way that I did it bigger was I started using these books to teach other people how to play. One idea, and I shared this with the cohort, was that I would bottle up lotion, and for tantrums, I would put sparkly cream in it. And in the sparkly cream, in the middle of a tantrum, which is basically your feelings not being able to get them out right, you would rub that on the child in the middle of the tantrum, and you would say, <gasps> The cream is working. The sparkles of magic are taking away your tantrum. They would get distracted. They would start looking at the sparkles. And then you can start giving them the words that they need to express themselves. So on a family and a family and a person to a person point of view, I was able to do that. But how could I actually do that in a really large way? So I started building large theme park attractions, huge ones, ones where you would go into big water play experiences, big giant dumping buckets of water on your head, shooting them out of cannons and being able to use themes like Curious George to get people to playing around a great IP. I started taking 20,000 foam Nerf balls and shooting them out of blasters and dumping them on your head and blowing them up like volcanoes and getting people to play in all these magnificent ways. And my favorite one was Magic Quest, which I used technology in really genius ways where you became an avatar and a video game come to life with a real magic wand that really worked. So you were able to walk around a huge environment, and you could wave your magic wand, and treasure chests would open, and dragons would come to life, and it would never forget you. You would be able to start your quest and adventure just like you were in a real video game, only this was live, and with families doing it together, and people socializing with each other. Big, never stop playing in this experience model. Now, overall, that doesn't sound world changing, does it? <laughs> it sounds like people changing, but it doesn't sound like it's a big world changing mission. And part of that reason, this is another one I did, but I'll go right past it, because it's a video game going down a water park slide. So the one thing that I truly enjoyed 
is the fact that I don't dislike technology. I think it's genius. But I don't think it's what's in front of us. I think it's behind the curtain. It could be tactile. It could be making it feel like magic. And I loved inventing technology that you never saw, but brought out the biggest play value in all of us. So what's hard is how do we think like that? How do we create like that? With the greater storytelling being bringing big problems into small sort of min vignette play experiences. That's how I started, but I want this to be really big. So when we were doing our play session together between all of us fellows and supporters, we were thinking about doing something with climate change. Could you imagine if we actually took that on and made a play attraction about it instead? What if that was a playful way of solving the problem? What if we got a large space, large investment, and brought everybody to the table? Because the way that it's really done is this guy holding the magic wand. He's not who I want to get playing. It's this guy, the one that doesn't participate, the arm pretzler, the one who's not in. He's my real victim. He's who I'm going after. Because if I can get him to play, now look at him. He's not in and he's not out. He's just kind of thinking about it. And if I can get him to really think about it and to get him to be involved, then you have your genius interaction. Then you can make real change. Because the guy who's bought in, he's in. It's the people that aren't that we really need to make a difference with. And play is an amazing vehicle to do that with. So I'm always thinking, always inventing, always creating, and always on the edge of taking anybody's idea and trying to figure out how to bring play into it, how to make it so that the pretzlers get involved, so that you open up the platform and you use technology to take your genius to the next level, to invent and create. So Brian was fooling with me as we were hanging out in some downtime together and said, what can you do with my land? How could you add some play to that? And all of a sudden, on my beach walk later, I realized, where's the new frontier for kids? Where can they all come so we can start there? Right? How can we create a whole new frontier so we invite children to learn, children to understand where they can take their powers? Because aren't they the ones that are really going to do it? Aren't they the next generation of players and entrepreneurs and change makers? And if we can take this gift that we all want to do now and pass it forward to them one playful step at a time, don't you think it will really work? I do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.